Good morning. This is uh, chapter three of uh, Palsy Philosopher Secrets Revealed, Belmont, California, 1963. Belmont, California was really a hilly place to live. Our house was on a hill. You walked in and there was a kitchen to your right, living room behind you. There was a staircase going downstairs, four steps going down, a landing, turn to your right, and go down five more stairs. I and my brother Mark, who was 12 years old, and I was 10 years old, we shared a room down there. Brother Tim was 17, and brother Bob, 16, they shared a room. And in the family room, brothers Tom and Jim were both 14, and they shared a, a fold-out couches down there. And there was also a bathroom and a laundry room down there. Upstairs, there were three bedrooms. My parents' room, my sister Sue and Grandma Mabbitt shared a room. Sue was a year old. Bill and Rick shared a room. Bill was five years old. Rick was four. There was also a bathroom in the hallway. I have always been a visual person. Uh, by memory because of my cerebral palsy. You always have to look at things and figure out how I would negotiate things, such as stairs and being able to use a bathroom or, or needing help with a t uh, shower or a tub. Our house had a small front yard. and the backyard, there was just a little porch, but then there was a steep hill going down covered with trees and it was full of poison oak, so you couldn't really go out down the hill by the trees and play in there. So the kids played in the front yard. I remember when I lived here in Belmont, there was a orthopedic school a few miles away, and they paid for a taxi to take us each day to and from school in the community, I guess. That's the way they worked it. I was a new kid, and I remember being in line and recess, and we had to be quiet. And we would all go out in the playground, and there were like three-wheel bikes that kids could ride. And then there was all these, there was this thing that they called, uh, was called a flexi. It was like a, um, a sled on wheels, and kids would use their hands to steer it, and they would push with one knee on the flexi and one on the ground, and they could really get going, and they would lay down on it. Kids could really go fast on them down hills. And I think that's why they were eventually outlawed. Uh, there was a kid, Gary, who was uh, really good on it, and, and he was around 12 or so, but he was only three feet tall, and he walked on Canadian crutches, and he either had to stand or he had to lay down on a gurney cart because if he bent his back, he would break it. And he wore braces up to his hips. And I'm pretty sure he was paralyzed, but he could really swing through those Canadian crutches and go fast. And when he rode a flex, he did it with his hands like this. And I guess he owned a bunch at home. And you know, a lot of times I said, oh, you think you're pretty good on that flex because... I was 10 years old, and I didn't know anybody, and and uh, so there was this thing called an Irish male, and it was low to the ground, and you sat on it, and you pumped it with your arms, and then you steered it with your feet on these pegs. It had a wheel in front for your foot, feet, and then it had two wheels on the side and the back. And first I got on there, and I tried to act all cool and stuff, but I could hardly write it. And then after a while, I got pretty good at it, and me and Gary became friends. And uh, and we would play like t-ball, and I would be out in the outfield on the Irish mail. And if the ball was hit and you hit, touched it before it hit the ground, the person was out. And uh, we became good friends. And also, I uh, remember there at that time when there was uh, we were eating lunch and. There was another kid with cerebral palsy, and he saw his foster parents, 
from another family that he used to live in. He started crying because he missed that family. Um, also, at this time, I remember that I was uh, riding the school with my friend Richard, or Dick. He went by Dick Bullard then. He had cerebral palsy, and he had we, he lived about two miles away from me, and his dad had built a, a house on this hill, and he had the steep driveway. I had to lean on it like this, and when he walked up to up and down it, he had to lean as far forward as he could. He didn't have to use canes when he walked, and he walked with his feet turned in, and he would drag them like a lot of people did with CP. And I even tried it a few times because I thought it was a cool way to, to walk, but I fell and uh, hurt myself a couple times doing that. But anyway, going into his house, the, at the end of the driveway, after he went down the steep driveway, there were five steps going into the house from the driveway, but there were also five steps going into the, uh, from the garage. And, uh, we, uh, I used to stay over at his house, and Dick could go down his basement steps. He put his hands on the wall, and he could be able to walk down the steps. And I always envied him for being able to do that. I couldn't do it. I would have to use the railing, or I would have to fall on the floor and then scoot down on my butt to get down to the basement. Um, his family and my family got on this big McDonald's kick. Uh, so a lot of times on weekends, uh, I'd go to McDonald's with his family, and uh, I'd spend the night there. And my dad also did it on weekends when he would stay, and we would get my dad would go get hamburgers for our whole family. All of us, he'd buy like 20 hamburgers, 10 fries and 10 milkshakes because we had so many kids and it became a tradition. Well, one weekend I went to uh, Dick's house and I was told in therapy that I should try to use my left hand more. So we had come back from McDonald's and I was uh, walking down the stairs and all of a sudden I had about three steps to go, and I lost my balance, and I fell forward. And because this is as far as this left hand would open, it stuck on the railing. So I was dangling back and forth, like, and I was yelling. I couldn't let go of the railing, and all of a sudden I hit the floor. So when I got up, I got up, and I, I went to a chair, and I put my arm on the chair, and it was a sturdy armrest, but it was felt like it was going like that. So I had broken a bone right here in my my uh, shoulder down below, or right here in my arm. And so I had to have a cast put on. And the next day, I, I next day when Rick, Dick saw me, he uh, was surprised, and uh, and I was at this time, I was also. Uh, in a class with this other guy, Renee, who had spina bifida. And he was different because he could walk, but yet he wore diapers. And, uh, and I didn't know that much about spina bifida back then, but it was rare that he could walk having it. And uh, we both were in this classroom with these other younger kids because of uh, the other classroom that we were in was too crowded, but me and Renee, we got to work on our workbooks by ourselves, and we could go our own rate, and some, we learned penmanship, and then we would work on math books or whatever, just me and him, and we would compete. And then I think after a while, they moved us back into the other class, as I recall, and, uh, then, uh, before we moved, um, oh, in that class, I forgot to mention, one day, the day after I got my cast put on my arm, I was walking to the bathroom, and all of a sudden, 
I wasn't using my cane, which I should have been. But I was walking to the bathroom, and I fell right on the arm, and they just put the new cast on here. And I just went shot right up to my elbow and stuff, and it really hurt bad. And I never went back to the doctor, but six or eight weeks later, we moved to Wisconsin, and I found out after they took it off that I had also fractured my collarbone. It was probably the day that I uh, fell on that. Well, before I left, though, I, I didn't mention that Rich and I, or Dick and I, which eventually uh, he changed, started calling himself Richard when he went to regular school after I moved. And that wasn't all a good experience for him. They always didn't accept him, but Richard was a good guy, and I've talked to him in the years since. But at this time, we became uh, really into the Beatles. And I remember I bought a Beatle wig for $5, and my dad wouldn't let me wear it and, uh, outside the house, and he wouldn't let me grow my hair down along. But Rich and I really used to buy the Beatles records, and we used to sing them all the time and enjoy the music. Before I moved, um, I also went and got my first communion. And here's a picture of me that you can see. I had the cast on my arm, and now I'm standing with a priest. And uh, I remember having First Communion, but before that, I had to go to confession. And I thought it was kind of weird. Why did I have to talk to a priest when I could just talk to God about my sins? And I went in there, and I said, I think I have bad thoughts. And, all this and that, but I really didn't, but I felt that's what you were supposed to say. And I thought it was kind of weird because, you know, a priest would know your voice, my voice, and know who I was anyway. But uh, we, uh, after I went to that, um, uh, after I went to have my first communion before we moved, um, my parents gave me a watch. And there was a kid who had muscular dystrophy. His name was Matthew, and uh, he was only about six years old, but he was in a wheelchair since he was five, but he helped me learn how to tell time, and I remember feeling sad for him because I knew that he was in a chair since he was two or three, and I knew that he probably wouldn't live past the age of 12. But that was my experiences in Belmont, California, before I moved to Greendale, Wisconsin, which will be my next chapter. Um, I've had a very interesting life, and I hope that me sharing this will help you uh, uh, learn about more about the disabled and realize we all have challenges, and I've been th quite thankful for my existence. So, so I'm... Um, uh, that's why I share it with so many. Have a good day, and thank you for listening. Bye for now.